Variables are your bread and butter for programming. If you've ever learned algebra, then you already know about variables. And if you've never learned algebra, well, you might be familiar with pi. Pi is a variable, a delicious variable, that stands for 3.14159 and so on and so forth. A variable is just one thing that holds a value. It stands in place for another thing. And in programming, it's either a number or a string. As you can see here, I have a variable, I've called it my variable, and it equals 1. But as I said, we can also store a string. Here I have my variable equaling hello with double quotes and hello with single quotes. A string must use either double quotes or single quotes. Either is fine. A variable can also receive a returned value. It doesn't just have to be a static value. For instance, this variable called returned value equals 1 plus 2. So, return value equals 3. You can see how this is very similar to algebra. We can also assign a variable a value that comes from other variables. Here I've made returned value equal object mario one dot x. I'm gathering the value of the x position for object mario one, which really could be any number along the x axis of our room. When it comes to naming a variable, there are a few rules you do have to follow. Number one, your variable can contain numbers, letters, and underscores, and it is case sensitive. Also, a variable can only be a maximum of 64 characters long. Although a variable can contain a number, a variable may not start with a number. Also, a variable cannot have spaces. Everything must be connected. If you'd like to use a space, use an underscore instead. Remember, you can name it whatever you want, but you can only use numbers, letters, and underscores. Declaring a variable in GML is actually a lot easier than in other languages. Simply type out the name of your variable and then assign it a value using the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And that's it, you've declared a variable. In regards to assigning a variable, we use the equal sign. Below, I have assigned my variable A to equal one. Once again, variables don't have to be static. Hence the term variable, they can vary. Here are some examples of my a variable changing. The first one is a plus equals one. If I put this into a step event, if you remember, a step event happens all the time. It's every tick of the game. This will take the value of a, which we made equal one, and then add one every step of the way. So a will start at one, and then when one step has elapsed, a will equal 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and continually increment by 1. Likewise, a minus equals 1 will decrement my a value by 1. You can also use times equals and divide equals. Just because you've declared a variable doesn't mean that you can access it from anywhere at any time. We actually have something called a variable scope, and there are three kinds of variables to understand. The first one to learn is instance variables. If you remember from my previous videos, an instance is a clone of an object in your game. When you're playing the game you've made, objects are not what actually inhabits your room. Objects are just kind of the brain behind each instance in your room. So if we opened up one of our objects and we declared the variable, my instance variable, and made it equal the string accessible within object or instance. This means that no other script or object can access this variable called my instance variable without using a dot operator, but we'll get into that a little later. This means though that we can use my instance variable again in another instance, and they will be two completely different variables. The next kind of variable is a local variable. To declare a local variable, you have to put var before the name of your variable. So here I have var, local variable, and I've made it equal the string accessible within event slash script. If I declare this local variable inside one of my objects, the computer will only remember this variable as long as the event is happening. Once the event finishes, the computer will forget this variable. Likewise, if you use this variable in a script, once the script is finished executing, the computer will forget this variable. 
This kind of variable is important when your variable doesn't need to be memorized and isn't going to be used for a long time. It's just something you need to use immediately just for that moment and then the computer can just forget about it. The third kind of variable is a global variable. To create a global variable, you use the word global dot and the name of your variable. And I've made mine equal the string accessible from anywhere. Once you declare a global variable, no matter where you declare it, the computer will remember it as long as the game is running. And anything, any script, any event, any action, can access this variable simply by typing global dot and the name of the variable. This is great for any kind of variable that has some sort of bearing on the entire game you're creating. Now there is a second way to declare a global variable. It's similar to a local variable. If you type in global var, and then the name of your global variable, after that you no longer have to put global dot. You can just reference your variable as if it were any other variable. You can see though that that might get confusing because you don't really know it's a global variable. Plus, you should remember your variables need unique names, so there aren't conflicts. So personally, I stick with global dot and the name of my global variable. It's great that you get to create your own variables. It's really what programming is all about. However, GameMaker does have built-in variables. These are some pre-made variables that you get to use. I have a few of them listed here. I've got x and y. These reference the x and y coordinate of this object on a plane in your room. GameMaker has speed, which references the speed of your object. There's room speed, which is how many steps will elapse before a second takes place. GameMaker also has score and lives and a whole slew of others, which you can check out within the help manual. It's important to familiarize yourself with these variables because some of them you'll use on a regular basis. And for the ones you don't use on a regular basis, you want to remember them anyway so you don't accidentally or at least try to create one of your own variables with the same name. Remember, variables have to be unique from each other. One last thing I want to talk about when it comes to variables. Although instance variables, local variables, and global variables exist in different places and can only be accessed from some places, that doesn't mean you can't access them. Here's an example right here. I've typed out object mario one dot lives. What I'm doing is using a dot operator to reference the variable lives inside the object, object mario one If I had just typed out lives, I would get the value for lives in this particular object. But if I wanted to get lives from a different object, I can just reference it with the dot operator. A good way to think about how variables work is to think about file structures on a computer. Typically, you start with a drive, like the C drive, and then after that, you get a bunch of folders, and inside each folder is a folder and a folder, and then usually some sort of file at the end. This is a lot like variables. The C drive is like your entire game. And on this level, we'd have all our global variables and constants. They're at the very top. Then we'd go into all of our resources. We'd have folders for scripts and backgrounds and objects and sprites. And then inside there, we'd have even more information. So anytime we wanted to access a file, we'd have to remember to type out say, users slash game slash whatever we're looking for. Just replace the slashes with a dot, and that's how you use a dot operator. Going back up to the object mario one dot lives, that's like a folder. Our object mario one is a folder, and we use the dot, and then we access lives. It's like saying, inside the object mario one folder, I want the file called lives. What's inside? The number three? That's how many lives he has left. I hope that's not too confusing to understand. All you really need to know is that variables hold a value, and the reason for that is so you can clearly, and in plain English, access that value at a later time in your game. Once we get into GameMaker functions, you'll definitely see how important variables are.